so start to recording om namo shivaya gurave sachidananda murtai nisprapanchayu santa निरलंबाय तेजसे शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सुत्रभासकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वर गुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिन व्यामवद्यादक्षिणामूर्त नम ओम अखंडमंडलाकार व्याचराचर तत्म दर्शित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओ नम ब्रह्मादिभ्या ब्रह्म विद्या संप्रदाय कर्तभ्यो बंस ऋषिभ्यो नमो गुरुभ्य सर्वोप्लवरिता प्रज्ञान घन प्रदगर्थ भ्रमेवाहमस्म ब्रमेवाहमस्मृभ्यो नम ओं गणपत नम ओम ऐं सरस्वत नम ओं क्लीं कलिकाय नम ओं क्लीं भद्रकाली नम ओं गं दुर्गाय नम ओं ह्री नम शिव so once again you are welcome here to study the philosophy of advaita vedanta today also i'll speak not long time but i have operation also left side today <laughs> so we'll continue for seven days today also a lot of pain but i take heavy medicines last time i slept but this time i feel to sleep but then i did my sadhana of this vidyas because i need to complete so before entering to panchagni so i need sri vidya sadhana has to be completed that is my sankalpa then i got the all the final sadhanas then no more sadhana for sri vidyas it means i can keep continue so the blessings of the parasakti the supreme shakti i'll enter into panchay and panchay in all though it is also parasakti vidya hmm, this is the one of the gupta vidya gupta vidya of the as per the science of tantra the tantra shastras so today now we are going to study niralamba upanishad which we have been studied very beginning long time before also it's very interesting that we are studying many kind of science nowadays since i starting this year all about um, shastras we study the pure vedanta hmm yoga shastra Vedanta Shastras, then science of Tantra Shastras as well, and same time we study Shaivism as well. So I try to cover all kind of ancient
So like yesterday, like today, we have some difficulties. <clears throat> Let's still continue. So today we'll start same the Nirlamba Upanishad. I shall all kind of ask this are helpful for the path of a Brahmagyana, for the path of the highest enlightenment. No. If you study all sasras, and then you became Brahmagyana. Huh? And became Atmagyani. It is actually not written any sastras. Right? You can study all scriptures. After study all scriptures, you became enlightenment. It's not possible that way. But sastras are helpful in order to guide you all the way to the enlightenment. So you can sastras are helpful. <laughs> Atmanam. Now, now it's recorded. Good. Yeah, it's good. So today, again, same continuing. We have still difficulties to fix a related city. Anyway, so today, what I like to speak, all sastras are helpful for the enlightenment, but same time, enlightenment comes. beyond mind matter of phenomena. So you can say Sastras are the helpful. So, but the enlightenment does not come like the Veda. What Veda say? Neti, neti, neti. It's not enough. It's not enough. To be a Brahmagyani. So to be a Brahmagyani, to have uh, being a self enlightenment, I mean, if you are wish, if you are inquiring to Brahmagyana, then you must meditate, enter into samadhi, and experience the super consciousness. The Atmagyana, the Brahmagyana, beyond this physical body, mind, matter, and phenomena. We see all kinds of Veda, Sastras, Yoga Sastras, Tantra Sastras, it's called Sahayata. It is helpful. Today, we have still some problems. <laughs> I'm laughing also. But I hope, because every day, last two, three days, I promise it does not work for me. So, because I tried to call the electricity man to fix the Wi-Fi, it does not work last two days. But today is my final promise. 
now we have only two weeks so and they are coming 2022 <clears throat> Today, I have so much pain, but somehow I was sitting two hours side of Ganga and did tapasya of the sleepy there, so I kind of release a lot of things. So we have been study, I think, the sutra number 10, the last time, right? 11, 12, how many we studied? I think we studied last time 13 or 14, no? Niralamba Upanishad. Yes, my karma. bookmark. My bookmark is at 13, 14. Yeah, correct. 14, 15, 16. So today, Agya. Niralamba Upanishad, we are going to study Sutra number 15. What is, and already we have studied, what is Agyana? Hmm. Agyana Miti Cha Rajo Sarprabhanti. Reva Aditvi Sarvana Stute Sarva May Brahmani Deva Tiri Okay. So we are studying today what is Agyana? What is Agyana? It is an illusory attribution. Agyana Miti Charajo. Sarpa Brahantiriva Ditvi. Saravana Stude. Sarvamaye Brahmani. Deva Tiryangam Stavarastri. Purusha Varanasrama Bandhamokya Padina Natma Veda Kalpitam Jnana Magyana. It is the illusory attribution, like the snake in the rope of many Atmas, souls, through the diverse Upadis or vehicles of the angels, beast, main. The fixed ones, females, males, caste, and order of life. Bandes and emancipation, etc. To Brahman. That second lace, all permitting and of the nature of all. Sutra number 15, where they sukham iti ta satidananda sarupam gyatma anandarupa. Yastiti Saiva Sukham. So, what is Sukham? What is the happiness? Sukham it is. So, It is a state of being, nature bliss, having cognized, having recognized through experience the reality of Satchidananda, of that which is the, which is be consciousness and bliss. See, what is Sukham? Sukham is the Jnana, the knowledge, the wisdom, and that one can experience. One can have direct experience as cognized. Cognized means not something we recognize by the mind, matter, or the senses. What is mean senses here? One cannot realize is not possible to realize, is not possible to cognize the five senses of the action, the five senses of the knowledge, even through the mana, buddhi, chitta, hankar. So not possible to experience the atma jnana. So atma jnana or the satchidananda, the pure consciousness, the bliss, absolute existence, only one can experience Beyond Panchakarmendris, beyond Panchagyanendris, 
beyond Pancha Tatvas, beyond Pancha Pranas, beyond Mana Bodhichitanka. That means, once again, it is a transcendental consciousness. One can achieve through the transcendental mind, through the Turiyati, eh? through the Turiyati. Then I say, what is Dukkha? Dukkha meti anatma rupo visa sankalpa eva dukkha. What is Dukkha? It is a mere sankalpa of the thinking, of the objects of mundane existence, of not self. What is not Atma? What is not belongs to Atma? Or what is not Atma? This is all our Dukkha. A mundane life. Hmm? The life of samsara, the life of mundane life, the conditional lives are the dukkha because it is nothing to do with the atma. And whatever related to atma, hmm? whatever related to atma is all are the sukham, jnanam. Dukkham miti anatma rupa visaya sankalpa eva dukkham. And then another come, what is Swarga? Swarga itita satsang sat sansarga has sarga. Naraka itita asatyam asatya samsara visaya jana sansarga eva naraka. Swarga itita sat sansarga has sarga. Naraka itita at Sat sansara visaya jana sansarga eva narakaha. So, what is the heaven? It is the association with the sat, either good mean or the Brahman, which is sat, the truth. Swarga means whatever establishes of the dharma. Hmm, what is swarga? What is the heaven? It is all about the establishment of the dharma, establishment of the nectar. And that is the called Brahman, the Satchidananda also, that is called Swarga. Where the Swarga. Where the bliss absolute consciousness, that is the real Swarga. That is where you can get the Sukham, not the Dukkha, all kind of a happiness. Then they say, what is Narak? Hell. What is the hell? What is the Narak? Sargaitita satsan sarga svargaha naragaitita asatya sansara visaya jana sansarga yeka naraka. What is a naraka? What is a hell? With the association with that which brings about this mundan existence which is asat and false knowledge. This is a mundan life. Hmm? Existence of mundan life or whatever the association with the samsara is known as Narak, the hell. Then what is Bandha? Eh? What is the bondage of the karma, of the sufferings? How do you feel bondage? Kartutva Adya Ahankara Sankalpo Bandha. Sankalpa. I was born arising from the affinities of the Beginningless again from the bandits. So, Kartutva Adi Ahankara Sankalpo Bandha. What is actually Bandha? When you say I was born, so you must realize I am eternal. I was not born, I will not die. <laughs> it's very interesting, eh? He was not born, he will not die. This is the knowledge. If you experience this, then you have jnana. If you think I was born, I mean who? Jiva. Hmm. So, without knowledge of Atma, the Jiva is in the bondage. 
So what happens? We are called Jiva and Atma. Two things. Jiva and Atma. They call Jiva Atma. As we are Jiva and we are the Jiva Atma as well. But we only experience Jiva, but we don't experience the Atma. So absence of Atma Jnana, you recognize yourself. What do we recognize? I'm this body, the mind, the matter and phenomena. So this knowledge leads to the bondage. Hmm? So absence of knowledge of Atma and we recognize ourselves as a Jiva. That leads to bondage. Hmm? That makes to that makes sufferings. Then after that, say, Animadya Asti Asurya Sa Siddha Sankalpo Vandhaha. They say, I thought abstract obscuration or the mental ignorance, thought of mental ignorance of the mundane existence of mind in such a father, mother, brother, wife, child, house, gardens, land. Are also bondage. They say, Anima Adya Aste Asuriya Sasida Sankalpa Bandha. Deva Manu Pyadu Pashana Kama Sankalpa Bandha. Yama Adya Astanga Yoga Sankalpa Bandha. Varna Asrama Adharma Karma Sankalpa Bandha. Agya Vaya Sansaya. Guna Sankala Pabandha Yaga Pratta Tapudana Vidhi Vidhana Gyana Sankala Pabandha Evil Mukya Apekya Sankala Pabandha Sankala Pamatra Sambhavabandha Very interesting. Saying, so whatever you do Sankala Pa, whatever you resolve, all are the Bandhas. What is that? So say, Mental ignorance. What is Kalavidya? It's my, everything's mine. My father, my brother, my brother, my wife, my child, my house, my garden, land, all are the bandits. Even say my ashram, <laughs> it has become also bandits. The thought of uh, I as an actor also bandits. I am doing everything. The thought of the development in one of the eight series, higher physical powers, anima or other one. So normally there is eight kind of series. So one can actually, one can obtain the eight kind of uh, supernatural powers. That is also bondage. I thought of uh, propitiating the angels, mean and destroy the bandits. Sometimes we can see that I'm talking with the angels, for example. So, Barna Yamadya Stanga Sankalpa Bandha, Barna Samadharma Sankalpa Bandha. Then, the thought of going through the eight means of yoga practices like Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Bharanasana. Sometimes we think we can practice the eight step of yoga, that also the burden is. The thought performing the duties of one's own caste and order of life is bondage. <laughs> the same. The thought that command, fear and doubts are the attributes for the portent to Atman is bondage. Even you have Sankalpa, I want Atma Jnana. Hmm? I want Brahma Jnana. That is also bondage. Anything you desire, right? Anything you desire, but you can have an inquire to Brahman, but not desire for the Brahman. You see, two sentences. You need to inquire to the Brahman, but not expect or not create the desire for the Brahman. So the thought that command, after that, thought of knowing the rules of performing sacrifice, hosts, austerity, and it is punished. Even to tapasya, that is called bondage. Even any kind of resolution is bondage. Any kind of sankalpa is bondage. And even to do yajna is also bondage. Very interesting, huh? So we're supposed to not do anything. 
So what I mean here? So then the thought of, uh, and then after that, the thought of knowing the rules of performing sacrifice goes austerity and keeps his bondage. Even the mere thought of desire for mukhya emancipation is bondage. Even you have desires. Say, kebal mukhya apekya sankalpa bandha. Even you have desires. <laughs> you have desire for the Brahman. A mukhya, it is also bondage. Uh, if you have desire for the mukhya, the final liberation is also bondage. By the very act of thought, bondage is caused. Sankalpa matra sambhava bandha. Say anything, you, anything you make sankalpa to achieve, hmm, to receive or to obtain, all are the bondage. So now you can understand what is actually bondage. So many things are abundant. Then what do you have to do? Mukhya iticha nitya anitya vasto vichara adanitya sansara sukha dukha visaya samastha chitra mamata bandha kheyo mukhya. What is mukhya? Mukhya is the state of annihilation. So the discrimination of the eternal from the non-eternal of thoughts of bondage. Like those of mine is object of pleasure and its pain lands in this transitory mundane existence. So what is actually moksha? Through the viveka, awakening of the viveka, you must clear what is real, what is unreal. And that all the way leads to the moksha, the final liberation. The upasya iti cha sarva sarira ta chama prapta ko guru guru upasya. So what is the upaya? Who is the upasya? Fit to be worshipped. Eh? What you have to do? That guru upasya iti cha sarva sarira sta chaitanya brahma prapta ko guru guru upasya. The God, the Guru, the spiritual instructor, the spiritual master, who enable, who enables, and means to, who enables to disciple to attain the Brahman, the conscious that is all bodies, that is in all bodies. What is upaya? So, upasaiti cha sarva sarirasta chaitkanam brahma prataka guru upaya. So I can see that final by the grace of gurus. So a disciple recognized eh, as a Brahma Jnana. Eh, as a Brahma Jnana. So the guru, the spiritual instructor who enables the disciple, that means by the grace of guru, one only can attain the Brahma Jnana so that is the final. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting Upanishad. This is a whatever you do, whatever the sadhana you do, whatever tapasya you do, if there is absence of a Guru's grace, absence of Guru's blessings, there is no Brahma Jnana, there are no final liberations. Hmm? Very interesting Upanishad for me also. See, does not matter what you do, tapasya. Does not matter what kind of sadhana you do. Any sadhana, you chant mantra, tantras, anything you do. But one need the grace of Guru, the grace of Master. Being a disciple, being a disciple, you must receive the grace of the Guru. Then the grace of the Guru. Only the way to lead to the final liberation, final mokshi jnana, or to achieve Brahman jnana. Then question mark comes, should we then we have to understand who is the disciple? Who is the disciple? He said, Guru can instruct to the disciple and that instructions leads to the Brahmigyana. <laughs> Another 
comment. So he can do anything. He can do all kind of tapasya, but does not help you to para pramanyan. But you need the guidance of the guru, the grace of guru. So guru only can guide to the pramanyan as per the niralambo panishad, as per the sastras. What is sisya? Sisya yeti cha vidya advasta prapancha avagahit jnana vasistam brahiva sisya. Sisya yeti cha what is sisya? What is the disciple? Who is the disciple? Who is sisya? The disciple is that Brahman alone that remains after the consciousness of the universe has been lost in him through Brahmic wisdom. They say the disciple, who is the disciple? Disciple is that Brahman alone that remains after the consciousness of the universe has been lost through the Brahmic wisdom. So, who is the Sishya? Sishya means who experience. What are the definition of Sishya? Who realize, who recognize, who we cognize. I'm a Brahman. I'm the pure consciousness. Such a wisdom leads to a Sishya to a desire. Sishya is a Vidya. Adhyastha prapancha avagahita jnana va system brahmiva Sishya. Not only that, Sisya means who have an inquiry into Brahma Jnana through the Vedic science. There is many kind of science is available for the path of enlightenment. So far, the conscience as for the Vedic science, as for the Sastras. So one has to study the Brahma Vidya under the guidance of the Brahmanista Gurus. As I already said you long time before, many Gurus, many teachers, many students, many disciples. But so far we consider the final liberation happens only when you walk the path of the Sastras, the Vedic Sastras. Many people claim their enlightenment, but that is their business. But that is not our business as per the Vedic science. You understand me? Many people think there are lightnings. But as for the Vedic science, Vedic Sastras, so they see that one has to get the guidance and study the Sastras so that they can have proper the Brahmagya as per the Vedic science. Therefore, among the old science, whatever available today in India, also we have many classical schools of the spirituality or the Sastras. But among them, the Advaita philosophy, the Brahma Vidya is the highest. And one has to study once again, I tell you, under guidance of the Brahmanista Gurus. As per the Adhikuru Sankaracharya, the Brahma Vidya one has to study under guidance of the sannyas gurus because they have the skills, the sannyasi gurus. They have skills of the Brahma Vidyas. They have skills of the Brahmin consciousness. Mm -hmm. I already said you sometime before, for example, somebody teaching this Brahma Vidya in the university. Mm -hmm by the many other teachers. But same same Brahma Vidya taught by the Sannyasi Guru. So it has big difference. Am I clear that? It's big difference. So therefore, as for the Vedic science, we concern, we concern. So one has to study Vedic science, the Sastras, under guidance of the Sanyas parampara, sanyas lineage, sanyas traditions, or the Brahmanista gurus. But it's up to you. You can choose <laughs> which guru you choose, right? 
which mark should you choose? It is up to you. But here, just as for the Sastras, I simply guide you or deliver these lectures or the discourse. I taught by the Vedic Gurus, the Brahmanista Gurus, uh, right? Then they say, Vidyanam Viticha Sarvantara Sta Swa Savida Vidva. Who is Vidva? It is he who has cognized the true form, the reality of his own consciousness that is latent in all. I give you one example today to all of you. Very interesting that I'll be finished tomorrow. Also, this will finish it. Today is the 32. And who is actually Vidva? It is, it is he who has cognized, recognized the true form, the reality of his own consciousness. That is the Latin. This Vidwan means who have the enlightenment and cognized the pure consciousness. The Atma Jnana, the wisdom of Atma within itself is called Vidwan, the wise person. Vidwan means being a wise. Wise means who can be wise and who have the Atma Jnana. Any knowledge except Atma, any knowledge you obtain in your life is called Avitya, Anatma. Anything Anatma is called Avitya. Hmm. Dukkha. Uh, anatma Dukkha. The wisdom, the Vidya. Whatever Anatma, nothing to do with the Atma, is all our Avitya. And let's do this other. I remember something. Now I forgot. Before you study Upanishad, you know what is meaning of Upanishad? Upa, near. So that means to sit down. To sit with the Brahmagyanis. To sit with the truth. To sit with the Brahmanista Gurus in order to study Upanishads. Just, uh, just all of you, today you are here, you are coming from Europe and listening to these lectures. Today, less or more, me, as per the 21st century, everybody lost the Guru traditions around the world. Even you people also lost the tradition of uh, Guru. Eh? Tradition of Guru, you lost in Europe and many places in the world. So today, India is able to keep this kind of tradition. Actually, there is no Guru Parampara, any traditions, except Vedi cultures, except Brahma Vidya. You must be clear that. Nobody, no, no one is able to keep the Guru Parampara. No one really keeping the Guru traditions today, except Brahma Vidyas. But I would like to remind you all of you today, and you see, nobody likes to accept the Sannyas Guru. Nobody likes to accept the Brahma Vidya traditions today in 21st century. Those people walking in the spiritual path, I'm speaking, very few. Very few. Even they don't have any little respect little humbleness towards the, the Brahma Vidya Gurus or the Sannyas traditions or the Vedic science. You check it, many people study reading the books written by many Swamis. But you must be clear and you study Sankhya philosophy, Yoga philosophy, Gita, Upanishad, all Brahma Vidyas. It is preserved by the Sannyas traditions. It is a preserved by the Brahmanista Gurus. Right? It was not preserved by any other religions except Hindu, except the 
Vedic and Sanatan Paramparas. And you reading their books or through the digitals, through the scriptures, right? But you don't have even a little respect to them. Right, what I mean? You go university, you go college, you study with the different professors or the teachers. They think they are your gurus. But real gurus who are keeping this beautiful science, general, we never humble. Right, Atmanam, what I'm speaking to you? You understand me, what I mean? Yes, yes. You want me to say something? Yes. It's like that. It's like this. They even, they advocate against gurus. You know, there are forums, uh, meditation forums, yoga forums, and somebody asks the questions, where can I find a guru? And then the answer comes, why do you find, why do you want to find a guru? Do it yourself, be your own master, grow, and like this, you know? You don't no, need... That, that, what I, that I don't mean, that I... I mean, it's misunderstood. What I mean, Atmanam, and in all the books of the sannyasins, many people read the books of sannyasins hmm. written by Adiguru Sankaracharya, yeah. written by Sukhadev, written by Vedabhyasa, written by Swami Tapasyananda, Swami Sivananda, Swami Satyananda, and so on. But we don't have little humbleness to them. Yes. Because we can see but those people come. Especially in yogic science, either somebody is Hindu, somebody Christian, somebody Muslim, somebody Jewish, somebody Buddhist, somebody Jain. Many religious people come. They're intellectuals. Mm. But they never respect. They never respect the Guru tradition of the Sanatana Paramparas and where this knowledge is coming from. But they try to get reference the books. And they yeah. think that is their knowledge. But they're cheating. They borrow the knowledge. Mm -hmm. They extract the knowledge. They're cheating themselves. So this Abhidya, they steal. They steal this knowledge as a professor, as a teacher. And they think they're the guru. And they pretend themselves that the great Brahmagyanis. Without respecting whoever the preserve this beautiful science of Vedic uh, knowledge. That would I mean today to you, Atman. You saw me say, oh, it's very nice, Swami Sivanandu. Oh, so nice, so nice commenter. But you have known little humbleness to Swami Sivanandu. That's what I mean. Many people study all reference of the Swami books, Swami traditions, Vedic science. You can see, even college, university, home, even digital, everything. But we don't have, we have so much abhidya, we have no little respect to them. Then we think others are for them is gurus. This is this is one thing. If you take the name of the some sannyasin to build your own fame about the of the name of the other some other sannyasin, and the other thing is, yeah, yeah you can start this uh, study the scripture of the sannyasins, but you don't have the blessings. You don't have the grace, so you can study all you exactly. want. It does not work. I have the three sound aria lari. <laughs> I was chanting this three sound aria lari. I get no initiation, so I just do it from mantra practice, Sanskrit practice. I don't expect them. <laughs> just do it. Exactly. So that what I mean to you. Like somebody study the sandal or Sri Vidya. Where is coming from? The Adiguru Sankarasya, the Parasakti Vidyas, the Vedic science as well. But we don't have little respect to Adiguru Sankarasya. Then we respect to someone, teacher, somebody Muslim, somebody Christian, somebody. For, I don't mind somebody respect to anyone. But at least we have to go to the root where this knowledge is coming from. So today we, we steal the knowledge. We are the stealers. And we don't have proper respect, proper humbleness. The people who actually bought this knowledge and preserve the knowledge, the root, that we must not forget. That's what I mean. The foundation of the knowledge of the Sastras, we should not forget. Maybe someone can teach me. He may be 
other dharmas. I don't mind it. Anyone teaching you that dharmas. Sandarulari, anyone can teach you. But don't forget the foundation, the founder as Adiguru Sankaracharya. Like this, we study Vedic knowledge. We should not forget the Veda Vyasa. We should not forget hmm, the Vyasa, the Rishis, the saints. We suppose not forget them. And so they say, they are not our tradition, they are not a gurus, I don't believe nothing. You are stealing all the knowledge. You never can be get blessed. You never will be blessed for the Brahma Gyan. That to be clear. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Okay, Brahmin comes as per your own wish. But so far you take help of the Brahmanyana, so far you take help of the Vedic knowledge. You suppose not still. Very important. Very important. So Maitri say something. I can't hear. Mm, namaste, Samiji. I just uh, think think uh, think thinking, singing, singing. Karpur Guram Karunavataram Sansara Saram Pujagendra Haram Sadava Santam Hridayara Vente Havam Havani Sahitam Namami. Good. You understand me today what I say? Thank you, Maitri Mariana. I'm very pleased. Uh, you understand what I mean today, my lecture? My lecture is still all knowledge. But uh, we never respect Yasa. We never respect Sankaracharya. We never respect the Brahman. Rather, we respect someone else. Right? That is yes, the I understand. Uh, Abhidya, Abhidya, I understand. Abhidya. Just, just we forget or all, all forget about roots, about parampara. Exactly. So today, we study with many other teachers, the professors. He may be Christian, he may be Muslim, he may be Jewish, he may be someone else, but rather we respect them. But we forgot the root. Adi Guru Shankara. Right? That's what I mean to you today. I don't mean you can read from anyone, you can study with any teachers, but we suppose not forget the founder, the root, the foundation of yoga. Like if we today study Saibhism, we suppose not forget Lord Shiva. Like we study Brahma Vidya, the Vedic knowledge, we suppose not forget the Vyasa. Vyasa is the main guru. Eh? Sukadev is the first Nyas guru, we suppose not forget. And he revealed all the science of the truth, the metaphysics of the Vedic knowledge. Sometimes we study Adiguru Sankaracharya, what he taught. Sometimes he studied Gita, Upanishad. Who is the written of the Gita? Veda Vyas. We just uh, let conclude today. Tomorrow we can have meditations and plus finish this in Yalamba Upanishad. Tomorrow the final lessons. Oh, and tomorrow is the 31st, right? So before ending, so we can finish the openness. Oh, then we can have New Year advanced celebrations. Then happy New Year tomorrow also. Om Nama Brahma Devya Brahma Vidya Sampradaya Kar Devya Vansari Sevya Nama Guru Bhya Sarva Plavarahitaha Pragyana Ghanaha Radhartha Brahmi Bahamasmi Brahmi Bahamasmi Brahmi Bahamasmi Om Sangaram Sangaracharam Kesavam Badarayanam Sutra Masakradam Vandi Bhagavantu Punaha Punaha Viswara Guru Atmeti Murti Veda Vivagini Vyamavadyapta Dehaya Sirachina Murtai Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Om Namur Gyo Namaha Hari Om So thanks to all of you today me Adi Guru Sankaracharya Lord Shiva bless you all
May all Brahmanista gurus bless you all. Thank you.